We have a nice looking gray paint job that really makes the CRV look nice, especially with these accents. We do get a gloss black grill because it's a sport trim and up. Everything else does get a matte black. I do wish they uh, darkened the chrome on the front as well, but you know, oh well. Every CRV does get standard LED headlights. I personally love the sleek and thin profile and they look pretty well done to me in my opinion. Very Mazda CX-5 kind of vibes. But the overall front end has been squared off and has a more traditional SUV look. I think it's better looking than the outgoing model. The side profile has been given that extended hood look that Honda has been doing with all their new cars. It gives their cars more of a rear wheel drive proportion, which I definitely don't mind. It makes it look a little bit better. The wheel design looks okay, not my favorite, but they are painted black and they are 18 inch wheels sitting on 235 with tires. The base two trims get 17 inch steel wheels with silver wheel caps, while the top trim gets a 19 inch wheel. But overall, the side profile looks pretty darn good to me. The rear end overall has a very minimalistic and simple and plain Jane kind of look to it. I do like the rear tail lights. They remind me of the Volvo. They are a combination LED, so they're, you know, some people are definitely not gonna like it. Since this is a sport, we have that blacked out sport badge, but unfortunately the CRV and the Honda badge are not blacked out and they are no visible exhaust showing. You only get that in the top trim, but overall the rear end, it fits with the design language of the overall vehicle, so it's a pass for me. Once we open up this power tailgate, we do get a decent amount of storage, 36 cubic feet behind the second row, and you can always increase that if you need more. And if you put down that second row, you get 76 cubic feet. It looks pretty decent overall back here. You get uh, nice LED lights. Beneath here, you do get a temporary spare tire as well. I think the top trim hybrid does only give you a fix a flat kit so that's kind of it is what it is and you can also adjust this to have two different floor height settings and put it down over here as well if you want so it gives you a little bit more space then you have some uh, storage dividers over here and a 12 volt as well otherwise materials are just hard touch plastic now let's move on Thank you to Wheaton Honda West of Calgary, Alberta for letting me borrow this all new CRV. If you're trying to get your hands on one and you're in the area, be sure to visit them as there's not too many around. The link to their website is right below in that description. Moving underneath the hood, you do have two choices, the 1.5 turbo that's in every trim or the two liter hybrid, which is a new trim and it's in the top trim only. We have that 1.5, it's the same as the previous generation with minor tweaks. It makes 190 horsepower and 179 pound-feet of torque. All trims are paired up with a CVT transmission and puts the power down through a front-wheel drive or all-wheel drive system, and I'll put the rest of the specs up on the screen for you. I wish we had a different motor sometimes. The 1.5 does seem a little undersized and underpowered in my opinion, but it still works. All right, time to jump inside. Here is the current Honda key. It's the same as the Civics and HRVs. Remote start, power tailgate button. Here is the back. Looks pretty nice overall, no complaints. Nice to feel in the hand. It's pretty small and lightweight. So let's jump inside. You do have keyless entry. Just put your hand behind the door here, door handle, sorry, and it'll open it up. Door panel looks fairly nice. You have the updated Honda switch gear, nice black texturized kind of plastic, soft touch plastic up top over here, and then hard touch. Actually, this is actually a little soft too, never mind. I do wish the door pocket was a little bit bigger because um, I have a lot of coffee cups in there usually. Maybe you like that too. And this is nicely stitched as well. So let's jump in now. It's nice and warm in here. Get a little entry chime. Put in the brakes, press the power button. I like how it's blacked out too, but there's a decent amount of black plastic it seems like but it's on areas where you wouldn't touch as much like over here is matte anyways so behind the steering wheel first uh, we do get a nice leather wrapped wheel which is on the sport trim and up it's heated on this trim and up only as well and it's got nice clicky buttons as well just like the civic and cre wheel behind the driver's wheel you do get a seven inch display to the left side and it does show you some different inf information based on uh, what you prefer really and uh, other than that, you know, it's got the half analog display, which is taken out of the Accord. A lot of things in this car is taken out of the Accord. So I'm not, that could be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on you. But overall, I think it's a good thing. You have the same nice venting that goes along the width of the passenger side on all the new Hondas. It, it feels pretty cool. It's a cool design, in my opinion. Now, 
One thing I definitely don't like is the center infotainment. It is a seven inch unit, six speaker audio system. Below that you have four speaker audio unit on like the L or the bass trim, sorry. And the upper end gets a nine inch infotainment. I'll talk about that later, but here's how the backup quality looks like. The usual, once again, I will say, I wish Honda would improve this. It could be better in my opinion. You do get wire or wired Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. and the top two trims, you get wireless options if you want. The HVAC controls taken right out of the Accord, which is a great thing for this side because you do have your nice clicky buttons, your knobs, hashtag save the knobs, you know I gotta say it. These feel just very high quality. Below that, you have your USB-C, USB-A, a 12 volt, and a nice little area for your wallet, your phone, and top trims do get a wireless charging pad over there. Shift lever, feels very reminiscent of the Civic as well. I do like how it's nice to feel in the hands. It's leather wrapped as well. I'm surprised they don't have these little button switch gears like they usually do in the Hondas. Your drive mode selector, which shows you right over here. Once you select, you have normal econ and snow. Your automatic uh, engine stop uh, button over here. Your electronic parking brake and brake holds. They all overall feel nice. I like how it's not glossy black over here and it's raised a little bit as well. Now, cup holders, texturized as well. Feels nice in the hand and deep enough as well. A little cubby tray for change. And your center storage here, plushy enough to not have your arm being sore after a long road trip. Open it up and you do get a huge storage. This thing, I think you take it out, there we go. Once it's taken out, you have like almost a foot deep in there and that thing just slid down the pocket. I'll get that out, don't worry. And now the seats themselves. These seats overall are pretty nice in my opinion. The sport trim always has that leather and fabric combo. They're on the pretty soft side, I would say. Overall, not too uh, uncomfortable. So they're pretty nice to look at as well. They are kind of on a six, on a comfort scale if I had to give it. And the fabric is pretty soft as well. They are heated, of course standard across the board and other than that the power seating is only given on the upper end trims so the lower end do have manual uh, adjusting seats which for me is never really a big issue to be honest with you and on top of that we do have a sunroof i've heard that honda does not offer the panel roof anymore on the top trims either so uh, canada is usually a little bit different i'm not sure if we're going to get the panel roof maybe we will i just haven't seen the top end touring uh, trim yet but you know standard sunroof i've never been a sunroof user but to, to you it might be a big deal so do with what you uh do with uh you will with that information so um other than that i'll talk about the rest of the interior uh, about my impressions of it uh while i'm driving but uh, i'm going to adjust the seat where i am and i'll show you how much space i have in the back let me jump into the back now same kind of nice feeling handle it's thick feeling which i like pause the rear end of the door panel, the door, rear door panel, sorry, it looks basically the same. Got this nice texturized plastic, soft. This is hard touch, so you can feel the uh, cost cutting over here, and same with down here. This feels decently soft. That's ah, okay, four out of 10 if I had to give it one. And you would have a rear heated seat button if it's a top trim. Now, while I jump into the back, I have the seat pretty far back compared to where I usually sit. I'm six foot one and it's, it's further back than usual. Let me open the door so you get more light. Sorry about that. And I still have a decent amount of leg room thanks to that. Look, the knee room I have is inches and my feet can kind of fit into the bottom here and they kind of touch over here. But overall, it's not that uncomfortable at all, in my opinion. You have a couple of vents, no USBs or anything. I do like the new Honda mats. They kind of wrap the carpets very nicely and protect it so and other than that the seats themselves the same kind of look pull this down for your cup holders this is always soft hondas always have a super soft and plushy rear center armrest your cup holders they do what cup holders do and you have a nice led light and headroom wise i still do have I would say about a couple inches and I'm leaning all the way back as well. It's nice to recline to the seat, which I don't think they recline as much or at all. So they only have one setting. Oh wait, no, they do. Well, let me get outside and show you. Okay, so this is kind of how it is normally. I move this and let it go. And this actually can recline a little bit and, and stay there as well. So. That's pretty nice to see for longer road trips, you know, your passengers in the back can be happy. But now let's get out on the road. All right, time to drive the all new CRV. I've been driving it for the last 
you know, couple d a day, I guess, sorry. And overall, it has been definitely good. That's for sure. Uh, no complaints. It's a CRV, so I don't, I don't expect a whole lot from it, but let's see how much of an acceleration this does. I'm not gonna do an acceleration test per se, because uh, it's a CRV, zero to 60 is around the eight second mark, but here we go, okay, ready? I mean, it's got okay acceleration to get you merged on. It's not the fastest thing. And once again, I'll reiterate, I'm not expecting it to be the fastest thing either, right? So it is what it is. One thing I definitely do like is it's feeling a lot more refined in the drive. The handling could be a little bit better, but once again, I keep my expectations to a compact crossover kind of look. I don't like something like a Mazda CX-5 has driving dynamics that a lot of people have enjoyed, but this, these are for your, you know, smaller families that need some space for passengers and cargo and decent gas mileage reliable and that's what the crv excels at in my opinion i definitely think it is one of the top choices in the class that you can get right now this redesign makes it look much better too now so a lot of people a lot of people should be overall pretty happy with this vehicle in my opinion now i have the prices written down here so i'm just going to quickly uh look at uh that the base price for the LX two-wheel drive in Canada here starts at $36,000, and that's about $27,500 in American dollars. We have the sport trim, right? And over here in Canada, that starts at $43,500, and that converted to USD is $32,500. The top trim goes out at $50,900 in Canada, while in the States, that's around $38,000 these are all direct conversions. I'm not saying that that's what the price is going to be. This is what the selling price is according to Honda.ca in Canada. So I'm not sure how much dealers are going to mark up CRVs. I know the new Type R is going to be marked up like crazy, but this I'm assuming shouldn't be other than maybe the top trim. That's probably hard to come by. Um, but otherwise, the driving is it's it's pretty decent. You know, the thin A pillars are helpful for visibility up front. The rear window is nice and large for easy visibility out back and the blind spot for the right side is probably the most uh, biggest one out there but it's still not that bad at all uh, you get a lot of standard safety driving uh, technology that honda usually offers other than the uh, parking sensors those are available on the top trims but every other trim i'm pretty sure has it at least here in canada i know honda likes to change out equipment for the american buyers compared to canadian buyers they do that a lot um, and other than that, the interior feels nice and, and comfortable overall. I mean, for what you pay, it looks pretty good to me. Materials used, even where the tablet is over here, soft touch over here, and even the uh, material of the dashboard at the top, the front portion right behind the glass, that's soft touch plastic as well. So I would say overall, for what the trim level is, you can get better equipment, obviously, if you want all that it's got perforated leather one thing i do not like is the biggest complaint i personally have is the infotainment and because it's a seven inch infotainment it doesn't even have decent ui in my opinion the nine inch you get proper honda ui and you also just uh, it looks better as well uh, because this is uh, in my opinion as a 2023 model year car i think it shouldn't have a seven inch infotainment system. I could get past the driver's display, no problem. I'm not sure if the top trim has a full uh, digital display, but the nine inch infotainment should have been the standard in my opinion. And then the 13 inch that the new Accord has is what should have been into here. That's one thing I think Honda does need to take more risks on is the infotainment unit. Um, because even the brand new Pilot has a nine inch infotainment for the top trim as well. Now the new uh, Accord they announced has a 13 inch with newer uh, UI with kind of Google integrated as well. So that's nice. I think that should be the, the infotainment for the top trim the, and the nine inch should be the ones for the rest of the lineup. In my opinion, for some people, the infotainment, it doesn't matter at all and that's understandable. So you do with, you know, you take that as uh, with a grain of salt. Uh, but other than that though, I think the all new CRV is a pretty good redesign and a pretty good model going you know, forward for the next five, six years. And I think it's it's uh, overall gonna be pretty successful like a lot of CRVs have always been. So I'll leave it with that. And uh, thank you for watching the review and I'll see you in the next one, peace.